Hi everyone, I wanted to share some inspiration with you all today and to do a rundown of my favourite cards from the past 12 months. This way if you've missed any tutorials or maybe some lives but you still want to kind of learn a little bit about the techniques that I've used for each one, I can briefly run you through those and I'll also add just at the top of the video here any links to tutorials if I've got them for each card as I walk through them. So I'm going to start with some of the oldest ones I've done and work my way through to the kind of present, the current day. So I'm going to start with the only one of all my cards that hasn't been made using a textures brand of product and that was this one and this one was actually quite a hard one for me because it was using Paper Rose Studio products um, everything I've used if it's still available um, and I can find it I'll link it down below for you um, but this one was using a die cut um, but paper piecing and actually rather than colouring in usually we'd colour in maybe with our um, alcohol pens for example or our pencils but instead I've actually paper pieced and used ink blended um, panels so for example the sponge cake there gets that light and dark tone to it and I've ombre the wording and then everything's lifted up on foam you can just about see that and it really makes this card pop in the background I've just very lightly uh, inked some iced spruce distress oxide and over the top I die cut a happy birthday sentiment die and just from white I didn't do anything else with it and I just glued it down over the top to give this a really textured background so that was one of the, my favorites from much earlier last year then I definitely went through a bit of a rainbow stage and this is probably one of my all-time favorites now as you can see my style really changes depending on the, what products I'm using and the uh, the occasion I suppose but this one I just adored it was really really simple to do so what I did is I ink blended a background now this of course can be done with absolutely any color but I really did go through a phase of using rainbow colors so ink blending so that's either distress oxides or distress ink something that's water reactive into uh, a watercolor cardstock and then once that had fully dried I then stamped some leaves over with clear ink and clear embossing powder now these were leaves were from my Magnolia Drive collection again if they're available I'll link them down below I also use them on this card which we'll come to in a moment and I just stamped them clear embossing and then once that was all cooled and dried I spritzed the entire panel with water uh, laid some kitchen towel underneath and lifted off the water and what happened is of course the embossing powder then resisted and kept hold of the color whereas the rest I could kind of lift a bit of the color up with the water and it lightened it it almost gave it a bit of a vellum look but leaving those leaves really nice and bright and vibrant so then a simple sentiment in black and white was enough to make it kind of pop on this beautiful bright background but again like I say one of my favorites and I believe this was actually one of my five minute make videos it really took no time at all so let's go to this same card using those leaves again. Now these leaves are the die version, so it is a stamp and die set. So obviously you use the stamps on this card and the dies here. Now this card was part of a collaboration with the lovely Christine Stokes. And um, I think we had a colorway that we needed to follow plus this particular die. So there was a little bit of a brief for both of us. Christine made a beautiful card and then I created this and I absolutely love it. I think for me, it's two things really it's the neutral background now this was made from just a plain piece of craft cardstock really simply I popped it into a scoreboard and I just scored lines at every increment all the way down and then I brushed over some white ink over those raised lines score lines and that's given me this beautiful sort of corrugated cardboard look to the background which is a really good way of just lifting any plain cardstock really it doesn't have to be craft it's all then placed onto a craft card base and then the leaves I ombre a big panel of um, cards just cardstock um, in the colors that I liked so I really love this I've got uncharted mariner here I can see I've got I think this is evergreen bow bundled sage um, this is Victorian velvet dusty Concord here I'm not sure what the dark blue is there but um, I'd imagine something like chip sapphire um, so all those colors in one big long panel and then I die cut my leaves from it afterwards and they're also all raised up as you can see onto 
foam that you can die cut to give it dimension as well as the word which comes from my textures in the stars collection so this way i think just adding the dimension gives it that lift and makes it look even more professional as well i will link that foam down below too because i use it all the time and it's probably featured in nearly every one of these cards somewhere so there's two from the magnolia drive collection then let's go to a couple of different cards I made using the Floral Folk Art Collection from Textures. Now these are see-through cards and I really, really love these. The first one is again sticking with the rainbow colours that I love to create. And this was part of a craft stash blog hop. So again, you can go and see this one. So on the inside, I've got an embossed white panel there. I'd definitely suggest write your message before you emboss that though, if you're going to, because it's really hard to write on now, it's bumpy. Or you can pop another panel on the back and right on that but the butterflies are like I say the floral folk art ones and they are simply just choosing three different colors or three different shades of each color and layering them up um, light so I've got light medium and dark and I varied whether it was the light on the top or the darker color on the top so you've got a real mix there um, again six colors nice and simple I could have uh, thrown in a purple in there I didn't do a red I must admit I kept it more summery I always feel red is more suited to perhaps autumn and winter so I kept it really spring summer like um, you can watch this tutorial in full but it's really really simple to create and again one of my top favorites and again there's that black foam underneath the sentiment there and I chose to pop that onto black rather than white with the sentiment because again it really lifts it up and this being an acetate card actually led me on to then create this card which was going to be an acetate card but I wanted to emboss the front and I wanted the embossing to really show up so for this one I actually used shrink plastic now shrink plastic for me is a fantastic alternative to acetate because it is stronger it's usually much thicker and heavier weight so for example I've folded that and it stands on its own beautifully that meant I could emboss it really nicely and it, again it held its strength but then I could sand it back so as you can see I actually sanded I used very light grit sandpaper and I sanded the back panel to make that frosted and I sanded the detail on the front on the embossing too it gives it a lovely matte finish as well and I really love that look um, I've done this on quite a few cards in the past and then from the same floral folk art collection I've actually taken the flowers and added those around a big bold sentiment across the top now I still have to add in a panel in here to write on that would probably just be from white cardstock in there but I just think that's really elegant really beautiful and it would make a really nice wedding card as well now it's funny how certain collections that I bring you from textures bring out certain styles and this style I'm not quite sure what you call it it's a little bit on the grungy side it's a little bit it's quite full there's a lot of detail going on but the uh, textures in the stars collection really brought this out and I absolutely adored layering up these images stamped images embossed images lots of black and white in here there is a tutorial for this particular card um, which I'll link above this one it was one that I actually did on a Facebook page called crafting together with all brands um, I did that as a live so if you're part of that group on Facebook I know there's lots of members you can still go and catch the video for that but again it's simple taking the same stamped images and uh, cutting into them and layering them up in different way some of these are black stamped onto white cardstock some of these are white embossing onto black cardstock so I've sort of mixed the two and again there's one of those butterflies that actually comes in the set along with these butterflies as well you get the two different types in one set so um, these ones I absolutely love, like I say, a recent video for this one showing you the full tutorial, so you can go and uh, check that out. And so let's just delve into this one a little bit more. In the background is the, um, I can't remember the name of it now, there's a stamp, it looks like a tarot card. So I stamped that in gold, you can just see the gold picking up in the light there. And I added watercolour and distress inks in the background to make it look like aged paper, almost like an age, old aged map. Then I used um, the same stamp onto a red piece of burgundy piece of cardstock with white, white embossing powder. And it actually has, you can just see them in the background, a couple of triangles. So I cut these triangles out from the red as well and then I layered those up. That's kind of my staple for my background. That's my anchor for everything else to layer on top. 
and then a few of the moons, the leaves as well. You can see one, like I say, white on black, one black on white. Um, you've got the planets there as well. And that butterfly is just using all those colours that I've already incorporated and layering up the same. Got some gilding wax on this one too. Um, yeah, absolutely adored making that one. Now to winter, I must admit I don't make a huge amount of Christmas cards, uh, very few Christmas cards in fact. I much prefer doing something summery with butterflies and flowers, um, but this one I really love, probably because I adore the colours. This is all part of my snow flurry collection. Uh, we've got the large snowflakes in there. These are layered up. They're embossed with white to give them a little bit of a sparkle. The stamp in the background as well. In fact, the stamp is from an earlier winter collection called Jack Frost. Um, and again, there is a, I'll try and link the live video where I created this one. This is a bit of a Marmite card, a bit of a love-hate card. You either love it or you hate it because some people aren't so keen on everything going on. But you can see there I've stamped in the background. I've then re-stamped this image and cut out some elements from it or punched out some elements from it. I think I punched or die cut circles, added a bit of colour to those, laid it out with the snowflake on top. And I really, really love the effect afterwards. A bit of a mixed media effect. We've even got some uh, threads going on in there as well. Now this one includes some hand colouring which I love to do but I prefer not to have to do it over a really really large area. This was actually created in a very recent live, again I will link it for you as long as I can find the link for you um, and I just had so much fun with this. This is a stamp from the Texture Geometrics collection. Um, the colours again you can see they're similar colours to here, much bolder these are probably my favourite colours together at the moment. I change my mind all the time. But on craft, wow, they really, really pop. I didn't have to emboss that. I just stamped it once. Um, I did re-stamp over the top once I'd finished colouring as well. Your stamping platform is ideal for that. Um, yeah, and I just, I think that is such a wow factor card. So beautiful. It really, really stands out. Now, one of my recent collections was the... Woodlands collection. Now this cheeky chappy is probably my favourite character so far throughout the textures range. Um, he is adorable. So he's actually sitting within an aperture with a black circle behind. I think this one was actually in the launch video for the collection on Craft Stash um, and maybe on my page as well on Facebook. The toadstools, I believe they're still available, but the bright red, the bright oranges and golds in there just look stunning against that black. I just think that is, I mean, some people are scared of using black on a card. I certainly am not, and I think it just makes it look fabulous. In fact, I actually use black backgrounds for quite a few of my cards with this collection because those warm tones really work. To get lots and lots of dimension in here, as you see, I've got a couple of layers of foam between the card base just here and the uh, layer on top. So that gave me the opportunity to tuck my leaves in, my toadstools as well, and the squirrel in there, and give it lots of shape. Now I've also shaped the squirrel ever so slightly, just so that when it sits there, you probably can't see so well. Oh, there we go. So you've actually got a shadow beneath him, giving it so much depth and dimension. And part of the same collection was this one. This is a really, really quick card. Shiitake happens. Obviously, you can see the play on words there, but this is going back to those rainbows. I think if all else fails, a rainbow card is always going to be a winner. I simply ink blended the rainbows, so the what four or five colours that I'd chosen, ink blended them in one long strip, die cut my um, mushrooms or toadstool heads from them. I didn't worry about the stems, just the heads from that strip of ink blended cardstock. And then I die cut the stems all from the same cream cardstock and layered them on top. And then I made sure that when I positioned them back on the card, that I kind of kept the colours running in the same order. So if you think about the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So they keep within that same sort of um, colour order. Again, I have used a really deep black with this as well to, to make it everything pop. Um, and again, on the craft, looks fabulous. 
Now another one of my collections was the monoprint collection and I adore these for different reasons. The reason I adore this card and I love it, it had to be included in this video, is because of the very subtle texture in the background. This is simply ink blended with um, some Distress Oxides going from dark blue to green, yellow and orange. But then I've taken the colours and I've stamped over the monoprint leaves in the diamond shape over the top. And you can see on the darker inks, the lighter inks really show up and then vice versa. So I just stamped yellow on all of these and green on all of these. And it just, it's so subtle, but when you're up close, I mean, particularly you can see on here, it just looks so pretty. And I've added some really messy machine stitching around the edge. The tension on my sewing machine had gone. The bobbin tension is really playing up at the minute. I can't get it to stabilise. But do you know what? It actually makes for some really fabulous texture on my card. So I'm not too worried because I very rarely even sew fabric anyway. And then from the same collection, I had to bring this card in because the colours are amazing. These are um, obviously blues and uh, dusky pinks, a little bit of green thrown in there. And I just thought it was a fabulous color combination that you could try. So we've got the layering stamps here and those gorgeous Moroccan tile and tiles that shape. And I've kind of faded the colors out towards the top to leave room for that nice bold sentiment. Um, the letters again, as well as the letters on here, those dies are part of the monoprint collection um, a lot of the strips that you're seeing here um, the word strips as you can see you can do anything there we've got the word wonderful on here a lot of these are all from my uh, sentiments for all packs again link down below so I just wanted to show you that one purely because it's a color combination I've not done before certainly one I will be trying again if you ever get stuck for color combinations definitely um, take a look at this but also take a look at my distress oxide color combination videos the whole playlist is here and it includes every single uh, ink pad that's within the distress ink and oxide range so whatever you've got you can go and see what colors you can mix them with and coordinate and then there's this one I had to show you also from the same collection the monoprint this one is what I call a stepping stone card because when I move it around like this you can see the depth so we've actually got some of these hexagons are flat back to the card some are raised up once and some are raised up twice now looking at it forward you can't really see that but like I say as I turn it you can really see the different depths and dim dimension that you've got and that does show quite a lot and quite well when you're looking at it in real life it looks amazing but it's actually really quick and easy to put together there is a video on this one like I say I called it the stepping stone technique and you'll find that one just up here too but equally the blush pink and the gold white and black I just think look beautiful together now lastly my favorite and this is the most recent card that I've made is this one you've probably seen the tutorial for this one this is actually a card in itself I need to put some signage on here and a closure just to make sure people are aware not to start ripping it apart like a normal envelope um, so just a little pull tab and a bit of hook and loop fastening or a magnet will work but this is my gorgeous pop-up envelope card I'm really pleased with how this works and this is actually from or using my new spring awakening collection so I was really pleased with how this turned out I just think from a reasonably plain envelope there that lovely pop of detail and color I adore the stamps again link all of those below for you and above I will link the video tutorial for this one so you can see exactly how I've made this with everything kind of just tucking into the envelope so it all pops up and lifts out as you open it so I hope you've enjoyed this little overview of all of my favorite cards from the past 12 months um, I will be back uploading some techniques and some more color combinations and color layering from the distress range very very soon if you haven't already I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel so that you can see things like these cards being made in full tutorials take care everybody let me know in the comments which one's your favorite and I'll see you again very soon